can wait until right at three o'clock to kind of get started. And um, yeah, that would, that would be great. Then I'll just forward it out to the rest of my staff. Tomorrow is actually our last contract day. So, um, you know, just making sure they have it kind of before we break, break for the end of the school year would be great. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> right what what uh what are you guys thinking where do you want to kind of start off with or are we just kind of mainly kind of trying to fill in and have a discussion about those bulleted items on that rating scale is that what you guys are thinking um, yeah, uh, so basically how we facilitated this in the past, Greg, was uh, we, we, we literally take this spreadsheet and we kind of walk through um, all of the items. There's a list of really 40 questions uh, as it relates to uh, core capacity um, with the core curriculum, capacity at specialty programs, technology, supervision, uh, and security, instructional aids. Uh, in physical characteristics, um, learning environment, and relationship with space. And so um, how we've been able to facilitate this, you know, within an hour is to really kind of outline uh, very clearly what we're looking for um, in these categories, because there's a tendency to, to talk about the built environment and exactly what the space is in the beginning. Um, whereas at this juncture, we're not really looking for that in the beginning. We will circle back and double back towards the end on some of those spaces. But um, as an example, capacity or core facilities on down uh, to sustainability and learning is it's, it's literally just do you, do you have the space needed for those programs? Um, and is the space large enough for those programs to accommodate those things? So. Um, we will get into the actual, you know, do I have enough plugs? Is it, you know, hot, cold, as we kind of go down the list? And some of that will dovetail in with the, the facility assessment that's already been done. Um, but this, this kind of has some of that information in there as well. So um, anyways, I, I kind of love to leave it to Richard to give kind of an overview um, of, of the ODE uh, assessment and why why this is really important. Um, it's really important because they require it, but I'm, I'm being a bit glib. <laughs> um, it's, um, you know, ODE put out these requirements for the long range facility planning process and you have to submit all of the required information to qualify the school district for the uh, Oregon School Capital Improvement Match Program. And so they gave um, the inspectors, both Joan and I are certified inspectors, and they gave us a description of the categories, those eight categories that you see, um, and they gave us some loose definitions. Well, we just converted that into a matrix. And um, we've used this several times in many other school districts and refined it over that time um, and it's turned, uh, it turned out to be a pretty effective tool for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it gives us kind of an overall assessment of the educational adequacy. And as Jonah mentioned, you know, we've already done the physical assessment of what works, what's broken, uh, black and white. Um, but now we want to touch base with the teachers and administrators to tell us how does it support contemporary teaching and learning. So the first thing it does, it, it gives you some parameters around which you can, we can do the assessment and there's so many categories. There's 40 questions that we kind of aggregate that down into eight, eight systems and average those and kind of come up with a, a reflection of how adequate the school is overall. Um, it also gives us a chance, Jonah and I, the chance to meet you and talk to you 
and talk about your school and give us a better sense of what we will see when we actually visit the schools on site uh, this summer while you're away. So this is A, a required step, B, very useful for you to kind of think about your spaces and how they work. And finally, we get to meet you and um, we're doing it for all the schools. So in the end, you'll be able to kind of see how other teachers and administrators view their schools. So we make the, the scoring pretty straightforward. I mean, if something's adequate or inadequate, those are kind of in my mind, it, it's either it is or it isn't. Well, we've given you a little bit of gray area. We've given you the option of saying, you know what? It is adequate, but it's not perfect. And so we have a scoring matrix that's very simple. Zero is it's inadequate. One, it's, it's marginally adequate. And two, it's great. Um, so it makes it simple. We average it and we come up with an overall building score. Um, it gets kind of clunky when we start out because it's, you know, it, we're trying to explain it. We'll facilitate that so that you can give us the reflection of scores you want. Um, by the third or fourth category, you're, everybody's got it and we're just moving right along. So are there any questions? No, that sounds good. Thank you. All right, Jonah, take it away. Great. <clears throat> So, um, so Greg and I, uh, we've been in coordination today and kind of one of the first steps that we want to uh, identify um, is really just where, where does all the program reside in the, in the school? You know, where are the core curriculum classrooms, where's SPED, where's counseling, uh, Title I, et cetera. Um, so Greg has graciously done this uh, in preparation for this meeting, so we don't necessarily have to go through all of that. Um, but what it, part of the importance of doing this is really understanding the capacity needs. Um, so kind of you can see up here outline K-4 classrooms, um, which I just did a real quick count. It looks like we really have 15 and not 17. Um, but that was, that was kind of our initial thought was it was 17. So it sounds like it's more like 15. Um, the district likes to keep classroom size to 20 uh, to 22 for K through four um, and then 25 through five through eight. So it just kind of gives us a sense for um, capacity needs at the individual schools and um, where they are uh, so we can get a better understanding of that. Um, so as we kind of start out, uh, as I mentioned uh, just a couple minutes ago, um, we'll really just kind of start with the um, the actual uh, space limitations or maybe not limitations uh, on these individual areas. So, you know, starting out with the first one, core facilities. So your classrooms, um, are your classrooms, are they, are they adequately sized uh, to deliver the instruction um, for, for your students? And that's kind of really the question. Yeah. I was just going to say, just to kind of, clarify the current setting that the district has allotted for Mark Twain. It's 15 classrooms or kindergarten through second grade. Um, plus there are three dedicated classrooms for special programs. So our counseling or basically kind of our social emotional space, um, special education, and then our ELD classroom. And then lastly, our library. So I would probably say in terms of answering that question for core facilities, the spaces themselves are probably adequate. I would say where we start to have questions come up or concerns come up from staff members would simply be that, that uh, our enrollment is starting to grow beyond what we currently have in terms of fixed space. And that's, and that's really mm -hmm. the concern. Like for example, we ended the school year at 351 maybe, 352 students. Um, and anticipating, anticipating more students next year. So anticipating almost 365 to 370 students. So starting to exceed the physical space of the building has kind of been where our discussions have been most recently. Okay. So this category, this section does break down into two uh, capacity discussions. And um, we believe that uh, uh, 
uh, special needs is an integral part of a core curriculum. Any, any school is going to have special needs. So we've got those as two separate line items. So you're, it sounds like you have how many classrooms are dedicated to self-contained K2? Is that 15 or is that 12? 15. 15. Okay. So and, we're, and we can break that down for you too. So six kinders, five first grade, and four second grade classrooms. Okay. And then special needs, it sounds like you have three dedicated spaces. Yeah, three dedicated spaces. Um, yeah, excluding like library media center as its own space. So yep. I'd say special needs would include the way it's listed up there. I would say special needs would include our, our ELD program, our special education program, and our counseling, mental health, social emotional learning program. Okay. All right, very good. So we do have um we do have media center separate, so we can we can address that. Yeah, we've got that as a separate line item. Correct. Okay. Um, next up, we so we talked about special needs. Uh, next up is cafeteria food service. So really, what we're getting at, how many how many uh, lunch uh, sessions do you have? Is it and is it adequately sized for uh, those number of you know? Typically what schools do, when the enrollment goes up, the population go up, you just have more lunch ses sessions. And that's not a good idea. Six lunch sessions doesn't work. So how many lunch periods do you have? We have three lunch periods and we separate those simply by grade level, which is a great natural separation. However, like this past year, we had 133 kindergartners. They all eat lunch at once. Yeah, okay. So, so the <laughs> The space, depending on how many people are in there, I'd say an appropriate number is probably, um, in, well, not appropriate. I would say an ideal situation would be in that 90 to 100. 90 to 100 is fine. Once you start getting over that, which two of our classrooms typically do that pretty easily, two of our grade levels, once you get over that, it starts to have some concerns. And a lot of the concerns, too, are kind of age or developmental concerns in terms of having all of the youngest kind of most vulnerable students that are in your school system under one roof. So that's typically where the biggest concerns arise is that, for example, kindergarten who needs a smaller setting, you know, uh, a small, you know, not necessarily a smaller physical space, but like it would be nice if they were spread out a little bit so they weren't right on top of each other. Unfortunately, we have a lunch session and there's 133 of them in a space built for a hundred elementary kids. So let's back up and let's score those. So now we've got some good parameters. So the on special needs, the spaces that you have dedicated, are those adequate, marginally adequate, or inadequate? I would I would vote I would vote adequate for our physical spaces for our special programs. Aaron, Donna, you guys get to vote too. And if you want to stay on mute, that's fine. You can put up your fingers. What do you think about this one? Is there a, enough space for the special needs program? Um, well, I think that if you're talking, taking into consideration Title I, then no, there's not enough space. Oh, yeah. Good. That's a very good point. We've got yeah. Title I in an old locker room. So I would say, I mean, if you're talking, it's not like, ideally, it's not adequate at all. There we go. All right, so that might um, be say zero. We have additional teachers too, so there's a bunch more that signed on after Aaron and I. Awesome, great. Okay, I'm sorry. I've got a single column, so we're so happy to have you. This is great. <laughs> you want us, oh, last nice. night you mentioned just everybody holding up fingers. Would that be easiest if everybody just holds up their fingers and votes zero, one, or two? That would be great if you want to speak up and make a point like you just did with uh, uh, Title I. Amen. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So where do we end up on uh, space, just space for special uh, special needs? A zero or one? There's a zeros, zero, zero. Okay. Jonah, I see a, a – well, you can see the same thing. Amazing how that works. It's a zero. <laughs> All right. So we've talked about the uh, cafeteria uh, food service. Um, three sessions, 
more size better for Owen. Now we've got, uh, I will try to monitor chat as well. Awfully small space for amount of kids of 100. So I, I agree. I was thinking more like 80. So it's size for 80. So it sounds like it's, it's certainly not adequate. It's not a two. So now we're between that zero and a one. One. Uh, one, one, it's close, yeah. Okay. Everybody. Still on. Yep. Yeah. What's everybody up? Oh, there we go. Thank you, Jefferson. Do you go by Jefferson? Yes. That's very cool. <laughs> it's not one okay with everybody. Nods will go do fine at this point. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the school office. Um, typically in schools of this vintage, they're in enough space for the school office, but uh, is that where it's, is it the other? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, you've got a conference. We actually, we actually have two spaces. So yeah, the office that you're pointing out where your cursor is, is kind of where our, our, ent our first entry point, first visibility for, for uh, community people when they come in. And then if you take a look over, yeah, where your other cursor is there, that's a secondary office. So we have another secretary, our, our basically our office manager mans that space. So we kind of have two separate office spaces. Um, okay. Configuration could be better, I'm sure, for, for flow and things like that. You know, whatever, what other folks think in terms of a, a voting scenario. Well, and then would the copy room fit in there under office, I would assume, like our where most of our copies happen. So that's um up there by the two there's a small little copy room area yeah that was kind of spread out yeah which is not a bad thing in some cases to have a couple of different places for folks to go so is there adequate space <laughs> i think the office is fairly well laid out but the copy room is pretty terrible the copy room, there's not really enough space to make copies and um, have access to supplies at the same time. We have easily adapted to the current spaces that were there and made them, so to speak, work. So I would say we're in that range of like a one, probably. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we see uh, some ones and I see some nodding. Is that okay with everybody? Anybody disagree? Awesome. Oh. One thing real quick, sorry, I was trying to move myself out. Um, <laughs> I don't know where the school nursing fits in here, but if it fits in with the school office, I would say that the space for the school nurse is probably, well, I think it's just how it's laid out because there's two sick beds, like right in an area that um, is frequented often. And the other school nurse um, office by the library is quite small as well and you can't really see kids in there. So um, I think that space is inadequate. So just in total, it's not the quality of the space. It, so if you put all those spaces together, it might be okay it, or, not, or not. Well, one is a thorough way, mm -hmm. um, okay. which, does, which it makes isolation or sick kids, it makes it impossible to contain okay um, I, guess. I think if there was another way to effectively talk about nursing services and space that's appropriate for kiddos that that might be separate from i guess the okay. office conversation yeah we don't get really down to that so this is the place this is your score sheet not ours so okay. yeah and like i said i don't know if this is the appropriate time to put the um nursing you know i don't know where it fits in here but that'll be something that'll need to be addressed at some point. Yeah, I think, and those are good reasons to put some notes on the side and why that would make that office area maybe a one. Perfect. You guys see, it's a little clunky, but it, you're getting the momentum. We appreciate it. And so that is the value. That, there was a question last night about, well, why is one school scored one way and the other school another way, scored a different way? And Jonah was able to bring up these sheets that are, have the annotations essentially as to why the scores went that way. So in your case, it'll be the nursing uh, spaces are kind of spread out and they're not 
uh, adequately sized because it's a through, through, uh, through path, through way. So perfect. So we're going to, is it a zero or one overall? Or there's ones. Okay. Um, something to add to that annotation. I know Leslie said that there are two nursing spaces. You may want to add that the one that is not a thoroughway is basically like, um, I think it may have been originally a storage closet type thing. I don't know if that was a real room at all. It's a desk space. Yes. We don't see kids in there. Yep. 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 Yeah. The schools today really have so many more spaces, need so many more spaces. Counseling, itinerant counseling, it just, old schools don't have enough support spaces. So that's what we're getting at here. So thank you. That's a segue. Counseling. Is there adequate space for the counseling? It sounds like your special needs counseling is often separate area, which is typical, but what about the uh, uh, general population? What do you mean when, you, when you're saying general population? What do I'm you... sorry, that, that was too much like something else. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you've got outside of your special needs, you, do you have any counseling services for everybody else in the school? So we basically, due to the age of the kiddos, that counseling service that we provide to kids looks very different. We have tried to shift more towards a very proactive, preventative, um, system. And so our counselor kind of acts as a teacher and kind of runs kind of special programs, basically. So instead of having a counseling office, we actually have a room dedicated. So it's much bigger than just counseling services and more about social and emotional learning standards and how our counselor can be proactive, support the teachers and have systems in place. And so we it's basically used as a, you know, our, our, the way our counseling services are used and everything that goes along with mental health and social emotional learning standards, it's through a classroom type of setting versus maybe a traditional counseling office where one student goes in there. We have to serve way more than just one student. Gotcha. Okay. That's, so how's the space in for, for that, those services? So Greg, what about the, um, like the Trillium counselors that come and do counseling? I mean, cause we do have that as well. Yeah. yeah and where do they meet? Yeah. And I think ideal Trillium is a, is a private yeah. outside company. And yeah. so I think like the, the, that's where it would be nice ideal if we had a separate counseling space for them to use for those services. But right now they come in and are use our conference room. So we just schedule our conference room for that. So in some, in some new schools, there's an itinerant office that's used by a lot of different uh, services that come in for short durations. So how do you want to score your counseling spaces? Zero, two, one. There were some twos earlier. Yeah, I, I would lean on the side of two. I think, I think we've made improvements now that we have shifted that setting to a classroom. That would be my input. So that's why I would vote a two. Okay. Now we get to the media and library, media center and library. I see a two, one. Uh, it's not really a media center. Thank you, Connie. It is just a library and there's really no room to, you might be able to add a desk or two for some media, but that's about it. And I don't know if that's the way that we would be going anyway, um, but it's definitely just a library. My, my input kind of piggybacking on what Connie was saying and Connie is our media specialist library specialist. So piggybacking on what Connie was saying, I would vote for it being a one because it, the, for the size of our building, a building that's 350 kids, it would be nicer if it was just a bigger footprint. Like it's, it's wall, it's, it's tight. When you run a classroom in there of 25 kids, it's, it's tight. Now it's beautiful and it's <laughs> way more effective than it was due to some recent upgrades and the, and the, um, the seismic upgrades and things like that that happened in there. Um, it, it is a good space and we make good use of it, but the footprint, I would, I would say it's a one from my perspective, simply because of the footprint and the, 
square footage. Well, and on the map, I mean, we took what half of it and made it a classroom. It was bigger originally. Right. And I, I do have a really nice size um, back room, which I'm using for partial storage. I actually have um, some Title I classes in there, a Title I class. Um, I think that space could be reconfigured and potentially a desk or two put back there for some media, but it's still not, it's not there. So it's not big enough? No. Okay. All right. How does it score? Marginally adequate or adequate? Right. There's some ones, marginally, marginally. Oh, there's more ones. Oh, great. I think we've got consensus. Okay. So the next one was actually added by one of your, uh, uh, your, one of your uh, colleagues' um, restrooms. Um, we want to know, are there adequate restrooms? No, there's the zeros, no's and zeros. <laughs> so, Jonah, go to the go to the floor plan. Where where are the restrooms? Just for our own edification. There's, yeah, there's two sets of restrooms. There's one down there in the Kinder space. I, okay, that's one set of restrooms, and then the other set of restrooms is up near the main office area. Just, yeah. maybe just to kind of generalize and capture why you're getting some of the response you're getting from the teachers yeah. is because um, originally it was a middle school. So we had to do some configuration to simply lawyer, lower the fixtures and make them accessible for five-year-olds. And in, in some cases, like some of our five-year-olds are tiny, like, uh -huh. sure. like, like three-year-olds, you know, almost in terms of size. There are some kiddos that are really small. But I think the other issue is you're dealing with some young students and uh, so, to, so for example, I'll give you an example. The, in the boys' restroom side, the urinals do not have privacy spacing in there. And so when you've got really young children and they're expected just to use a restroom like an old, star, an, an old, uh, an old school rodeo bar where you're you know, <laughs> going to the bathroom shoulder to shoulder, you know, that type of, it, it just doesn't work. It's not appropriate. Um, and so I think that's why you're getting some of your responses. Plus, you're talking about 350 kids when a classroom goes to use the restrooms the amount of time that's spent out in front is just it's it's just an inappropriate use of time during the school day i would also like to piggyback on that and say that we've got teachers that are going to the bathroom right next to kindergartners because there's a lack of staff bathrooms and you know well, the I was gonna say, yeah. there are are so far away we just don't have time to go that far so We've had lots of issues with that. Well, there's, yeah, there's only two restrooms for all of our staff, two single restrooms. And oftentimes when we have five minutes to get there and back and they're both full often. Okay. So that sounds like it's uh, zero or one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you got some help there. Aaron. Good. It's a zero, Jonathan. <laughs> So would you like for me to roll on, Jonah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So um, the next one, we're still talking about how much space there is. We're just talking about the capacity. So tell us about what art and music program you have, and then does it have its own space, or do you just have an art program, or do you do art program in the self-contained classroom? So this is... Art and music, tell us what, how, it, how it works for your school. Yeah, that, I mean, just kind of a generally, and I, teachers can definitely weigh in, but if you want, can, do you want to flip back to, there's, no, there's nothing on the map, so maybe go back to the rating. I would say those things are tried to be implemented in the classroom, but you don't really have space to keep musical instruments or to have like store an ongoing art project or even to dry things very often? Yeah, general, it's a general classroom. So I'm thinking like art and music is gonna end up being a zero. I'm seeing so some th nods there, Jonah. There really, there really is a, you know, science again um, is, is really a zero. There's nothing dedicated to science. 
CTE, there's nothing dedicated to CTE either. So with for CTE, and thank you, Greg, for moving us along. In some cases, we just put a non -app, not applicable. So that, might, might, be, so that CTE. might be more appropriate. Yeah, CTE. And science as well? No. Um, I think science, we would love to have a space, dedicated space to actually hold some of our science equipment. Yeah, yeah. standard yeah. meet, so it would make sense that that stays on there. But I don't think we have CTE standards at our K2. Yeah. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Joni's right, yeah. So it's a, um, a zero and a zero and a not applicable. That's, that's probably most appropriate. Okay. Uh, PE, PE ha I mean, we have a gym. So we do have a dedicated gym. I think the <clears throat> only concern, like I might lean towards a one and Jefferson is our PE teacher and he can weigh in as well as the classroom teachers. But I would lean towards starting us off with a one because A, we do have a gym. Um, it's, it's decent size. But I would also say that, you know, based on the size of the school and the requirements that the state does give us to have PE, um, it's, it's, it's a little, it, it's a one. Everybody, what's everybody else think? So Jefferson. far away, too. Ah, we've got a category for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. Jefferson, do you feel like you have adequate space for, for equipment storage? Now that I'm utilizing the, the back store, it's hard to get in out with the tables there. Um, like I can't have big things back there, but I mean, yeah, there, there's adequate space. So is it a two or one Jefferson? I'd say one. I would also add that the kids that are in PE are having to go up the hallway and, you know, to the bathroom. It's again, that's a restroom issue, but since they're using the locker rooms for class, yeah. um, you've got that issue too. Great. Uh, so the next category can be a little bit misleading. What we're, it says community spaces. And really what this is, is trying to reflect if your community uses your building, is there a space that they might use on a regular basis? that it works for them. Many times it might be a library. Most of the time it's a gym. So that's the kind of community space we're talking about. Is it adequately sized if you have one? I would start us off at a, at a one. I mean, we're a K2 elementary school. So in terms of spaces for community, it's not, it's, it's not the same as like maybe a middle school or a high school. <coughs> I would, I would lean towards starting this at a one. So what kind of community uses do you have? And typically these are in off hours, but not, not exclusively. Jim? One, one thing I would say though, when the community is using um, the, like the gym, it's really not a big enough gym to oh. support the things that are happening in there. I mean, there's nowhere to sit. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, they can play. Yes, and the lack of bat being able to use the bathrooms there. I mean, it's not it's not ideal at all to have community use in even in the gym for sports. Okay, it's not set up with the <laughs> it's not set up with the correct amenities. You know, to have a, a size gym that works, and and not even just for like the community at large, but like if another uh, like a middle school wants to play a basketball game there. There's no, there's no seating for fans to accommodate parents, things like that, the restroom situation, and to be able to partition the school off so that we can be done with our normal school day and then somebody can come in and use the facility and have access to restrooms, have sufficient space to move around, but have it be separate from the school. Right now, when people come in to use the facility, for the most part, they have free run of the school. Sure. Good, good annotation. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, so the next one again is a little bit. We need needs a definition. Do you have any specific programs that might be uh, sustainable and outdoor water quality or outdoor learning programs that uh, you have now that have adequate space on your campus? I don't know. We might need more direction. I guess what. What are some examples? Uh, community garden. No. Uh, 
water quality uh, testing, a creek running through. Um, but if you don't have the programs and it's either, it might be an NA, but if you do have those programs or trying to run those programs and you don't have the space, then let's have a corresponding score. I would start us off with probably NA. Do you have the little nursery? Yeah, and we've thought about looking into starting a composting program, but since there isn't a space to put it, we just kind of didn't even look further. Okay. So that sounds like there's not adequate space for that kind of program. So this group gets the opportunity to, to score it a zero or NA. What's a better reflection of your school? The best reflection of your school? There's a zero. Say okay. Zero. Okay. Thank you. You got the composting program, Jonah? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see it. I'm going, I'm on split screen. Okay. And I've got the bigger chart over here. <laughs> okay. Now we get into, and Greg helped us out. This one, we're changing what we're talking about. We're just going to talk about systems. In this case, it's uh, really about how we're, you know, technology is an integral part of teaching and learning now. And so what are the systems that kind of support? Them? So the first thing we talk about is data networks, GE, data network and distribution. I know it's old school, but it's hardwired into the building. Is there, so tell me what, why, if, Greg, you didn't score that one. Is there not, uh, or did you? Yeah, the data network I did, and the, and the reason I did is we just got a grant, and so literally we just got upgraded with all new wiring. Um, you know, so in terms of like that section, like we just got a brand new upgrade, so that's why I put it at two. Okay. The wire is even hidden. And I'm the sorry. wires are hidden. They're not on the outside of the wall. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's wow. a bonus. Yeah. That's a, wow, how'd you speak <laughs> that? <laughs> so the next one is power. That's, are there enough outlets in your classrooms? Just looking at the building, it's a, there you go. Okay. Yeah. It's Easy. a it, zero. Yep. Easily a zero. It's a 60s, early 60s, mid-century modern vintage building with Zero power. Okay. Um, I think you already touched on Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. Do you have any audio enhancement see, uh, systems, whether it's portable, you know, for some for your teachers? Um, Are you talking uh, about like an intercom system? No audio enhancement. There's a, a lot of research that has to do with if kids in the back can hear better. And the, Greg, the, I think he's talking more like that thing that was in Nicole's room where she would wear the microphone yeah. and it would go. Yeah, exactly. So if that's the case, I would probably say I would probably say zero. We don't really have any of that. Okay. Uh, again, this these charts are a little bit outdated because this is what ODE gave us. But video and interactive technology. Um, tell me what what you're using uh, you got any whiteboards you got interactive TVs kind of tell give us uh, is that one you touched upon nope okay yeah yeah so and teachers can maybe maybe uh, um, um, add to what I'm going to start with but uh, all of the classrooms have a have a TV one we do have one teacher that uses a whiteboard um, but they all have like a projector or um, a TV some of them have it hooked up to, uh, you know, like, like an Apple TV so they can send signals from an iPad or their computer and things like that. And so a number of the teachers do have a large TV in their classroom to, to at least have the accessibility for the, for the video and interactive technology. It is just um, a smart TV. It's not like a touchscreen TV. Correct. It's Correct. not smart technology where you can actually project and touch the, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So teachers might have a better indication of what they would score that as. Thank you. One, one, Any, anybody else? There's another one. Uh, would anybody object to a one? All right, let's see. Um, the next one is just uh, fire life safety. It's very simple. Uh, fire alarm bells, there's a zero. Security systems, access controls. Uh, so, so we do have, so, so on that one too, and the reason I didn't start it off is like security system, like for example, I'm saying it's a zero for a couple of reasons. Number one, when we 
pull the alarm and do our fire drills for the month. The alarm is still set on the old school spring loaded buzzer that once the spring runs out of its length, the buzzer goes off. So it only warns people for 90 seconds. And then after that, it's fine. So we have that system. We also, when, the, when a, a, a fire alarm goes off, it doesn't directly go to the fire department. We don't have a security system um, set up. Um, yeah, it's, it's outdated. It's probably a zero to save us time. Okay. Yep. Sure. Yeah, it really should be able to, it should have a call box at the front door or such that when the fire department shows up, it tells them where the fire is. But so I agree, it sounds like a zero. Okay. Um, access, we talked about access controls and camera. Do you have a, a camera at your front door? Uh, so we have, I would probably say that for passive security and visibility, we can mark that as a one. We have had some upgrades. So like, for example, we have a buzz-in system at the front door. It does have a camera similar to like a, a ring that somebody might put on your doorknob at, for your residential. However, we um, are in the process of our next step is to get cameras in the rest of the school. It's hardwired for it, but our previous system was like a Costco system. It was just completely inadequate. So we have some things, we do have some hard wiring, but it does need some attention. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that would be in the access controls and cameras portion. So do we want that as a zero then? Is that I would start us at a zero unless other folks would like to weigh in. I, I don't see a dissenting voice or a dissenting gesture. Okay. Uh, so the light, site and landscape, is it, uh, I mean, looking at your uh, site plan, it, it looks like you have pretty good visibility of the uh, the parking lot. Uh, where do the buses drop off? I I would start us off at a zero for this, and then to okay. answer your question, the buses are on the south side, just beyond the ELD. There's a horseshoe shape. That's where the buses come in. Our and this is I know there's some other categories, but I would say our parking, our busing, the walk routes because it's on a real hilly uh, footprint for the age of our students um, in our building, I, I would I would start us at a zero unless somebody wants to weigh in and say I'm off base and it should bumped up to a one. So let me frame it a little bit in saying that this is about supervision and security. So we do have a, a later category that talks about uh, access to the site and pedestrian, but we can put it in both places. I, I don't want to talk you out of anything. Just want to cl uh, clarify. So maybe so for maybe for that, I would I would say it may bump into the category of a one just to start us off because we we can see. Um, yeah, although it's not in this one because I thought we had one that had physical barriers and control. Yeah, fencing is physical barrier and control. Is that fencing or is that more of the facility itself? Mm -hmm. Yep, then you're spot on. Uh, Yep. Okay, Both. so we just fencing. need an upgrade in fencing. We have egress gates, for example. Um, that was that was recently happened. So for like site and landscaping, if we're just talking visibility and things like that, I, I would say we could start at a one. And then I'd love to hear feedback from others. Does this include recess? Uh, it could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, if kids can hide and, or or you know, heaven forbid, you know, somebody want to, uh, you know, kidnap some a student, you know, does the fence keep out and are they visible? So yes, it's all these things. We're just trying to create a safe site where kids uh, can just be kids. It, it is all fence, but it is also very spread out. So with the, you know, it's, I definitely think kids can hide for sure. So does your site go all the way beyond the tree line in the back or is there a fence back there? It's, oh, it's, it goes all the way. They just are told not to go over there. Okay. Uh, I, I would say it's not like with the trees and stuff, they could easily hide in there even though it's within the fence. It's not super safe. I mean, we have them trained, but it's no, there's no physical barrier. Yeah. So does your property go all the way to the, uh, what looks like uh, 
uh, a, a trailer production facility. On which end are you talking about? The north end? North. Yes, north. So on the north end, out, yeah, where your cursor is, if you go out those doors, there's a parking lot there that's not fenced in. And then basically to the west side of Church Street, as it goes to gravel, the west side, that's, that's our property. So those trees and stuff are our property. The footprint itself is fenced in, but, but there are, there are some issues. I mean, it's not, um, you know, there, there are some issues there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Brooks, Brooks, right. Right. So I think a one, a one is appropriate for that. Okay. Great. All right. Um, and again, this, these conversations help us understand the school more than just answering, uh, than filling out the chart. So thank you. Um, so now we're into uh, instructional age. This is where uh, the teachers get to be very selfish. Um, we're really talking about storage of equipment necessary for you to do uh, your job. Uh, teacher and student storage is, is the first category. Adequate, oh, there's a one. We see a few ones, not, okay. Sounds like it's marginally adequate. Any uh, annotations we need to add to this one? All right, uh, do student display areas. Is there adequate uh, spaces for students to display their work? There's zeros, all right. I, there's, uh, <laughs> again, the predominant score is zero. I don't see any dissenting votes, okay. So what's the biggest challenge with in that regard? Somebody share with me? Most schools have bulletin boards and we usually just sticky tack stuff either on their lockers or try and put it on the hard surface above. Okay, so the, the hallways are lined with lockers. Lockers and concrete hard walls. Yep. Nice. And there's like one display case near the office that we can kind of use, but it's like a trophy case type thing. And you have to access it from the nurse's office and it's kind of awkward. Great, great. Okay. Uh, fixtures, furnishings, and equipment is fancy language for furniture and then any equipment that you use uh, in your, your daily uh, uh, classroom. How did, would you rate it? Did you just get some new furniture? Is it old, 1962? And that's the question. I mean, I would, I would start us at a one. I think, I think we do try to buy some new things. Um, I think the teachers are very, very specific about what works for their students in their classrooms. So I would say we have a mixture of some new things that we purchased to make the learning environment a plus in terms of fixtures and furnishings, but there is an element of kind of it, not the classrooms necessarily, but from office space to foyer to, um, you know, to special classrooms and things like that. There is an element of things thrown together. So not really an overarching plan where we purchase new things and so I would say we're in that we're in that gray area. That's probably a, a version of a one. Okay. Other thoughts, other scores, other gestures. It may come down if we have to take into consideration the six feet apart thing. I think when we take in that factor, we may be lower. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The uh, okay. So how do we want to score it? All right, I, uh, there's this, all right, so there are some uh, zeros, but predominantly ones. Would you like to, okay, you want to advocate for the zero? Oh, I'm just wondering, um, so a lot of our classrooms have flexible seating and stuff that we've either purchased ourselves or got through donors choose projects. Right. Is that being considered because if it is like if you're supposed to just look at what the district provided us like I remember when we were at Eugene Field some of those tables we got were old like older than all of us right 
you know, to me, that's not adequate at all. But if we can consider the stuff we purchased ourselves, then it would be a one. So what I would like to advocate for is a one, and we make a point that a lot of the upgrades from the, to make it minimally adequate is really based on self-purchase and some, uh, some donors. Again, the, I, the notes are as important as the scores. Thank you so much. Is that all right, Brooke? Thank you. Okay, we have uh, 12 minutes to get through these last categories. Everybody's getting a feel for it, good. Uh, we'll stay <laughs> longer, but I understand we're up against, we wanna get it within an hour, so. Uh, now we're going back to these, these spaces that we talked about, how big they are. You now need to, can tell us how, what's the quality of the space. Do they really support what you're trying to do? So. This gets, the first question is the core curriculum. This is the, the regular classrooms. Are they adequate, character, are their physical characteristics adequate to providing you the space you need to do uh, teaching and learning, provide your teaching and learning? I would, I would start us off on the core curriculum. So when I'm thinking about core curriculum, I'm thinking about footprint and things like that. Um, the teachers probably can weigh in about specifics within the room, for example, adequate space for them as the teacher. Um, you know, kind of like, I know there's an element in there with natural light or something like that or day lighting that comes in. So I'm assuming that we're simply talking about the footprint, size of the classroom and things like that, taking out of, a, taking out of the equation. Uh, I see heating and cooling down there. I see lighting. I see air quality and things like that. So if we draw some distinction on this category, it might be easier to. Okay, so, so let's do that. Let's do that first. Would that be all right? Yeah, yeah. So I, so I would start off with on core curriculum and I'd like to see what the, where the teachers go from this. In terms of the footprint and the size of the room, um, most of the classrooms have a separate office space also within them, but in terms of footprint and size of the room and where we try to keep the class numbers, um, I, I would start us at a two. But the teachers may have a different feeling on square footage and simply the room. There's a support for a two. Uh, any other, anybody other else choosing to Contribute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's stick with the two, Jonah, unless somebody okay. speaks up. Um, and then if we, and if we just to kind of speed us up through here, we do not I, have dedicated classrooms for art, music, science, CTE, PE is going to have a gym, special needs. So we could probably have NA for art, music, science, and CTE and hop down to the gym. And I would, I would start us off at, I would start us off, I think, based on our previous conversations, a one in the gym would probably be a great place to start and then maybe get some feedback from teachers in Jefferson. And this is the physical characteristics of your gym. No. It'd so, be nice if it was a full-size gym. Well, I'm, I'm thinking more of the, the painted lines for four square, uh, hopscotch, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, wall ball lines on the wall, line up spaces, that sort of thing. We don't have any of that because it was – built for middle school. So all we have is uh, volleyball and basketball lines. Great. So there was a, there was a one suggested. How would you rate it, Jefferson, on the physical characteristics? Oh. Great, Jim. <laughs> Can I go 0.5? <laughs> we made it. We made it. We <laughs> <laughs> we took out we we started with a one through ten <laughs> i'll say a one then. Oh, okay everybody else in support of a one thank you thank you very much special needs physical characteristics again we're not talking the size we took care of the size earlier physical characteristics of the spaces that you got this is kind of hard in our building because i think we have unique uh, you, a unique makeup of our kids based on their age and development and, and things like that. And so special needs in our building looks a little bit different. I, I, I don't know. I'm curious to hear what teachers say, but 
but if we're just talking about do we have a dedicated room and is it a full-size classroom, I would lean towards just on square footage, we could say a two. What, um, about, what about how far away it is? Yeah, I was going to say, is this where we talk I mean, about that? that? But I think to special needs, I would say like ELD gets lumped into that too. So ELD is, is, is in a good location. Um, but but, but, it's, really, yeah. but it's really not in an ideal location because it's completely separate. And like, you know, it's one of the busiest hallways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like when we're going to lunch or, you know, yeah. kids are going to recess, it's really not an, an ideal place, you know, yeah. in location. So I would definitely say at least a one just because of where the logistics of getting kids to and from them. Yeah, that's good input. That's that all great points. She's right. And I'm so not one, saying that I've gotten yelled at by title for my music, but I, I may have gotten talked into a few times. Well, and the fact that title can flood based on the outdoor conditions. Right. Yeah. And we did reflect, we did reflect up at the top too. Like for example, title is title is a zero. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So what do we want to score here? There's a one, some ones. We're okay unless somebody speaks up. Thank you all. Um, okay, this one is, is pretty straightforward. It's uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. There's zeros, thank you, you're so far ahead. I, could, uh, I can save you some time on this one. Heating and okay. ventilation is a zero. Natural ventilation is a zero. Indoor air quality is probably probably a zero. It's all this stuff is outdated. Um, the day lighting. That's windows. That's, that's fancy talk for a window. So here's my, here's my question. If we're drawing some uh, definitions with day lighting, do we get natural light in? Yes. However, the windows are so old that it impacts the heating in the room. So like you get a greenhouse effect in there. And then in terms of like, you know, it's, I, yeah, what's the definition? Give me, an, a, give me an architectural definition here for this. Do you have windows in your classroom? Yes. Okay. That, that's the strictest definition, and we're going to annotate it to in, reflect the fact that there okay. are old windows and they need to be replaced. Yes. Yeah. Can we also add that, um, you know, like many are broken? I mean, I have, oh my gosh. I've got I'm bullet sorry. holes in my in my windows in my classroom. Multiple classrooms have bullet holes. BB oh. gun, BB gun, let's, let's not but get- still. Uh, still looks like a bullet hole. <laughs> That's all the kids know. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, okay, you got that. Are you, mark, are you marking that like a one? What's an appropriate score for that then? Well, you do have daylighting, so I, I would ask that you not make it a zero, but- it, Right. They are great windows. It's okay. great lighting when it's not too hot and it's not going to greenhouse it. It's great lighting. If they Let's were, not if forget they that I closed one this year and it shattered. That's true. Because <laughs> you did yeah. your push-ups that day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we're going to stick with the one. Thank you, thank you. Acoustics. This could be noise between classrooms. This could be the noise in the classroom. Uh, I see some zeros already. Look at you guys. You're rolling. I, I, uh, Joan, I think it's a zero. Accessibility is probably a zero, too. It's not good. So the, this is uh, directed primarily at uh, limited mobility or wheelchair bound? Yeah, it's Terrible. a zero. We Terrible. have one elevator thing people have to go in through the gym, and it's not a very great wheelchair lift. Awesome. Thank you. Or it's terrible, but thank you. That that's good clarification for us. Yeah. Okay. This is the one where it's all about relationships of spaces. So proximity to shared spaces. It sounds like it's a zero if you have to go all up. Yep. The gym, the cafeteria, all at the extreme end. Any student that's out there in the kindergarten end has a, such a long way to go. Okay. Um, you didn't have outdoor learning. Uh, we scored it a zero because you don't have the space for it, but it looks like, you know, you could have programs with as much space as you have, but I, the proximity to it is probably a long way away. Correct. So, okay. Yeah. Hey, so Jonah, you while, you're, Jonah while you're typing in there on that accessibility where you put the one wheelchair lift in the gym, 
I would probably also add that our ADA access at the front of the building is a gravel path. Oh, okay. So we're, yeah, thank you. Very, very enlightening. These, this is great. Honestly, we're filling out a form, but we get so much information about your school that we know what to look for and at when we, uh, we visit this summer. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, bus parking, bus and parking access. I, I would say it's a zero unless we get strong objections from staff. The biggest problem is? The footprint of the school is in an area where everything from, I mean, that leads us to the school. Everything is narrow streets, no parking, limited space on streets, congestion, those type of things. Got it. The property itself, in terms of being close to the building, there's no parking, no places for busing. I awesome. mean, they're literally using the south side of the building because the other sides of the building are simply not accessible. Thank Once you. staff is parked, there's little to no room for parents. And you have so much sight, my gosh. Yeah. But the gravel lot, what's, what, is that teacher parking? It's no, it is, uh, it's, for, it's for families, but the problem with it is it's too far away. Um, six months out of the year, it's wet and muddy. Um, yeah. And it's just the, the distance away, like for example, going into pedestrian access, I, yes. mean, I mean, we're a low one to a high zero. Um, see, what, see what the rest of the staff think, but we, we did have a safe routes to school audit. Uh, there were a number of things that were addressed in there specifically, um, but you know, from the, the sidewalks, the hilly environment, um, the congestion, it's pedestrian access is, is not great. It's not great. It's there, but it's, but it, and we have had some upgrades. I will say we have had new sidewalks go in. So there has been some movement. Um, we did get some with the, with the, um, um, help me the earthquake seismic upgrades with the seismic upgrades. We did have some new sidewalks on the south side of the building, some adjustments in the hand railing. Huh? Um, on the west side of the building, there were some upgrades with the sidewalks, also some upgrades up on church, but the access is just not very good. So, I mean, I'm saying high zero, low one would, would be where I would say. So access, uh, tell me what you want. Zero, I see some zeros. Okay, it's a zero. The last one. Uh, access to playgrounds and fields. Yeah, it's, I would start us off with, it's a distance, it's hilly, there are not dedicated paths. And, uh, you know, since we have wet weather six months out of the year, like it's just a real challenge on our, on our site for access to playgrounds and stuff. So again, I'm at like a high zero, low one. I think if especially we, especially when you're talking our age of kids, it is not okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we yeah. make it work because we have no other choice, but <laughs> it's not adequate at all. Yeah. When you tie it into um, having a secure facility, there the easiest way for kindergarten to go outside is that end of the building down by them, but then you have to mess with a padlock to unlock a chain with the gate, and if it doesn't get locked up correctly, then you go into that security part so yeah. going all the way around to the ELD area is where they should be going out but that's hard with those little guys sure there be lots of congestion might, sure. might be it, it might be more probably I saw a lot of zeros I don't have access to everybody's face but I saw a lot of zeros yes it, it is a zero and it we're, we're beginning to understand, or I am, I'll speak for myself, understand the topography is a real challenge. Yep. And now that I'm looking at the field, the uh, street view, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, if it was a topo map, you'd see a whole lot of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. Okay. Yep, okay. Well, the results are in. Nice. Well, good, and we and we got through in an hour. I kind of promised staff that we would get that taken care of for their yeah. 
time commitments. We've got some big stuff going on at the school, kindergarten graduation stuff today too. So staff, I appreciate your input, especially with the, with the, the late notice on the invite. And thank you, Greg, thank for you. putting it together. Folks, this is so important that we capture this information so that when we come on site over the summer, we know what we're looking at. And I appreciate so much your uh, making time to get us done today. Thank you very much. Great meeting you. Thank um, you. Thanks, we, everybody. Richard and Jenna. Before we, before we go, I want to change something quick. It's your chart, sure. <laughs> Um, would you scroll up to the top for me, please? Right. To which area? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Um, can you go all the way to the top of the form? Yeah, there we go. So I don't, just so I can sleep better at night, I'd like to just sort of initiate, like, I think it's really important that we have one more classroom. You'll notice the numbers go from six kinder, five first, to down to four um, second. And that creates huge numbers for the first and second grade classrooms. So maybe you could just type that in your little notes. And I, I don't think it deserves a two. I'd like to go down to a one on core facilities. Because really when you have that huge population, you're affecting nine classrooms. Really kinders only have the, an acceptable amount of students in their classes. Yeah, when you said at the beginning, I know Jonah, Richard, one of you guys said at the beginning what Silver Falls wanted as an ideal number in a K2 or K3 room. And Greg definitely alluded to this, that we're, we're above those numbers. And I think this year will be the second year in recent history where second grades will have near 30 in each room. Yeah, and in, in school districts, the, the, we act many times get a breakdown for kindergarten that's even smaller uh, than, you know, they separate kindergarten out, they do kindergarten, primary, intermediate, and then older kids. So if you're at 30 with kindergarten, wow, that's, that's a lot of kids. Yeah, we're, we're not, she was, she was referring with to second the graders. Older ones. We do oh, a good okay. job. We do a good job with kindergarten. Great although job. this year's class did balloon up on us, but for the most part, we try really hard to stay at that 20. And okay. we, okay. know, some of them go 20, maybe a classroom with 22 kind of in there. Okay. And as those kids go to first grade, and I think this is what Jennifer's talking about, what six kindergarten classrooms, first grade and second grade, our max that we try to stay at is 25, though the last couple of years we bumped up above that and we had two years ago, we had second grade numbers because of the shift okay. um, that, were, that, were in, that were 30s. Okay. And in a K through two building where we've got all of these young kids under one roof, it's just a dynamic that makes a really difficult situation for those kids as well as our staff on a daily basis. Understand. Yep. And 30 is more, it exceeds the number that the school district is trying to achieve. Yeah. 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 So were yep. you going to change the core facility to a one or do you want to? It's, up, it's yeah. up to you guys. There's a one. I, I could, I could support that for sure. J Jennifer brings up a really good point. Okay. I just, I don't think classes, from 25 to 27 in the first and second grade level is adequate at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd prefer one. And it's not as simple as, oh, well, we'll just, you know, take away one of our special programs and make it a regular classroom because now you're taking it out of our classroom hallway for one. And then for two, you're impacting one of our higher needs, populations of students, which is not equitable. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. I can sleep better. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, Sounds everybody. Good. And and once I get this recording back on the cloud, I'll send it your way, Greg. I appreciate that, and I'll send it out to my staff so everybody has access it, to it. So this was this was really good. Appreciate Great. it. Thank you very much, and thank you for recording. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.